What's good, y'all? It's your boy DJ T Mac checking back in with you before we get to this great interview with my friend DC, one of my really good buddies from college. Uh, it's been a while since we got to catch up and reconnect, so that's what we do here in this interview. But he is also a barber and the founder and CEO of Grooming and Beauty Professionals. He created a mobile barber backpack mobile workstation and also a whole bunch of products to go on house calls and you know pretty much a whole line of things so i talked to him about product creation development his ideas his mindset his mentality and a whole bunch more so make sure you guys stick around to the end of the interview make sure you like the interview below make sure you subscribe below make sure you share it with a friend because i'm sure you know somebody who would be interested in this type of good conversation and comment like share subscribe all that did i say that i don't know but thank you so much for checking out this video make sure you stay tuned because there's a lot more to come this year enjoy the conversation what is good y'all dj t mac here with another great conversation i usually say hip-hop conversation i'm sure we're going to be talking a little bit of hip-hop also but we're going to be interviewing a different type of artist today this is my friend uh he goes by the name of dc dc rivera and uh he is the founder and ceo of gnb pro grooming and beauty professionals he's got his own products and a whole bunch of different stuff going on it has to do with uh barbering and just grooming in general and uh you know, this is my buddy. I haven't seen him, haven't been able to talk to him too while in a while. So figured we'll get him on here, chop it up and see what's going on in his life. DC, how are you, man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me over, bro. So um, it's definitely a pleasure being in your platform, man. Absolutely. Anytime, man. Anytime. I see you doing your thing, hustling. Uh, and and so, I just like it. I'm inspired by it, man. So I, I Props. Thanks, I'm man. definitely inspired and it pushes me to do to keep going and doing my thing. I, I love that, man. You know, sometimes, you know, words can be so much more, you know, through actions than 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 there is with like actual, you know, just just saying this. So the fact that I'm able to do something from from which I've been learning from and also inspire other people to do it is it's, there's no better satisfaction than that, man. Amen. Amen. So, like I said, he's a different type of artist. The man, when I first met him, he was uh, doing barbering. It started in his uh, dorm room. Yep. The first year I met I met you, you were doing them in there. The second year he had his, you know, he, he stays growing. The evolution continues. The second year he had his apartment off campus and his own little yeah. room there. <laughs> we was playing 2K, doing our thing, you know, having some fun. Yeah. But uh, when did you first start uh, getting into cutting hair? How, how did that all start for you? How did you get inspired to do that? Uh, my brother, um, Sandy, he's the one who taught me how to cut hair. You know, um, he opened up his first barbershop in, in 2009, right when the recession hit. And uh, he just um, started working from, from barbershop to barbershop. He got his own spot. So I was in there all the time. So when he first opened up his barbershop, that's when I went up to SUNY Delhi. And um, up in campus, I didn't want to work in the Mac Hall. I didn't want to work on campus. You know what I mean? I didn't want to do that because... Just like the time restriction, you know how it was, you know, you got a, you have a schedule and then it's not really much of a pay. So then I told myself, you know what, my brother's a barber and I kind of know it. And I know that if I push myself and I learn, I could be good at it. So let me just do this and, 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 and do it up in, in college and, and earn some money that way. Um, so it's, it was something that wasn't really planned. It was something that it was out of necessity. And um, I was learning how to cut hair through students and everybody else on campus. Wow. And I, I sucked at it, bro. Like, I wasn't good. The only thing I was good at was talking. You know what I mean? I could sit somebody down in my chair. And, you know, we, we got to become uh, fast friends. And, and eventually I had different deals. I was always good at marketing. So I kind of took a little bit of um, my experiences growing up and kind of, like, cultivated everything up in uh, uh SUNY Delhi. So I think I think the starting point from which I started cutting hair was in between 2009 and when I first attended my first semester in SUNY Delhi. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Uh very interesting little fun fact there. I was going to ask you how long you were cutting hair before you were at school, but man kind of just learned it on the job and you know, did yeah. his thing. And hey, it was a fly haircut the first one. That's why we we kept coming back, man. So yeah. I don't know, you must have got lucky with us or something. No. <laughs> You know, it was always a good time coming, coming through. 
it was just like a little getaway from campus too. Like, you know, we're me and my friends, we were from Long Island. Shout out Kevin and Rob. I think I'm in there. With yes, sir. Us. You know, you were from NYC. So we had a little bit of a similar connection there and could speak a different language than it was what was going on at some other parts of the campus, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. Um, so what were you actually majoring in Del High? I was going for drafting and design, computer aided drafting and design. Didn't really get to work in that field uh, exactly how I wanted to, but what were you studying up there? I was, uh, I went in for business actually. I was a business major, business, business administration. Um, it's just, I don't know, to be honest, like um, I didn't, I didn't get, I was, I grew up in Bronx, first generation, you know, immigrant to this country. Um, born, I mean, I was born in the York, but I was raised predominantly in the same area where I, where I lived in the Bronx. So it was like a little tight knit community. And, um, I went to elementary school, I went to high school and then, and then, um, later in college, I went upstate. Um, but my dean was the one who suggested for me to go to SUNY Delhi and I didn't know which major to choose from because everything was brand new to me. I said, you know, I, I kind of like business. Let me, let me go in for business. How um, do you feel like you were able to parlay a lot of that stuff that you learned um, into your company that you have now? Or is it just kind of, you know, the schooling was different than actually being a business and doing it yourself? Well, I think that my whole experience in college was uh, was probably the best education I got, you know, the overall aside. experience of going away, right? Yeah, overall, man, because it, it taught me about just a whole bunch of different people. It taught me about different ways of doing things, you know, and how to adapt and how to be independent and how to survive on your own. So <laughs> I think that uh, schooling was uh, was very interesting to me. I, I like my professors and my teachers. Um, but I always had a knack to, since I was cutting hair for so long, Tyler, it's like I was cutting hair and I wasn't really focusing on class like that. You know what I mean? Like it's sad to say, but that was that was the truth of reality. I was just like cutting hair all the time. So mm -hmm. yeah, so I think I learned a lot from from my studies and my my courses, but I think the majority of my experience actually came from my hands-on experience. That's great, man. That's very interesting. And and that's cool. You know, that's that's really where I've you know, I went to school and I definitely learned a lot of things that are transferable, but it's really about being out there in the in the real world, as they say, yeah. and, you know, doing it for real. That's where you're going to really learn and make mistakes and, you know, grow. So absolutely good. Good to hear that. What was your first like impression when you visited Delhi? I'm sure that must have been a, a big difference for you, right? It was just brand new, man. I, I didn't I didn't know what to expect. The day before, my brother gave me a haircut and uh the machine was hot, so he kind of gave me a little scar inside, and that was like my first introduction. Um, I my first semester was was the uh, um, spring semester. So for those that don't know, spring semester starts in January, which is cold. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't go in doing you know during the fall when it was warm. I went in doing when it was cold, and then and then it got warmer later on. But um, I remember my first experience was. This, this big ass school and this big ass hill. And uh, I remember I was surrounded by a whole bunch of beautiful scenery I never seen before, mountains and stuff. Yeah, first first time for me too, seeing stuff like that and being being up there. Yeah, man. And then it's like, um, it's funny, I ran into a old friend that I used to work with at McDonald's when I was like 16 and he was up there, his name is Corey Miller. And uh, we ran into each other. And we're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, you're here too. And then everybody was just happy, man. I remember it was a happy time. I was just walking them on campus, looking at everything. Everything was brand new to them. Mm -hmm. So it, it was it was a good experience, man. That's cool. That's cool. So when you're there, obviously, you know, you had this entrepreneurial spirit and you know the the necessity to survive and make money, really, it sounds like. Um after school, I think is when you came out with the Easy Clip Band, right? Was yeah. that your first product that wow. you really started developing? Like, you know, you had this spirit in you. Like, is that the first thing after cutting hair that like you tried to do? Yeah, man. So actually, the Easy Clip Band came to me in a dream, bro. Believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, it was just something that uh, I don't know what happened, but during that time my oldest brother um ended up passing away tragically in my home my home in, in dominican republic my home country 
And thank you, man. And then, um, you know, it's just, it's changed. My whole life has changed. My family changed. Everything was just different from that point on. So I told myself, you know, I got to stop messing around, you know, going out to parties and doing this. I had a whole bunch of money in the shoebox, but I had no money in my account. I had no credibility. Um, then I told myself, you know, I got to, I got to get my life together, man. Cause you know, things just could be one day you could be somewhere and the next day you could be somewhere else. You never know. So then I was just thinking, and I guess me thinking about it all night, different things or different strategies to like really um, create a product in my head. Cause I always knew I want to create a product. I kind of felt, fell asleep and, and I, I, I just, I visualized this, this band around my wrist and exactly how you do it. And it's like, it was like amazing. It's like a sign from God or something. Damn, so you woke up and drew it out right there. Or? I did. I did. I woke up, man. And, and, and I drew it uh, literally in a piece of napkin. And then from that point on, I didn't know what to do. Cause I, there was, there's like really no foundation or no procedures of how to really proceed with an idea and how to produce it, how to manufacture it, how to, how to source a vendor, how to source a manufacturer. There's a lot of things that go into play. So I reached out to the best and most, you know, informative thing that I know, which is Google. I went on Google and then I started, you know, just learning about different things. And, and then um, my mom lent me like, she lent me about $5,000 that she has saved. And cause she believed in me. And um, my brother ended up closing the barbershop where he was at before he moved back to DR. And he gave me another $5,000 from that. And I put everything together. I filed for a patent. And I sent the rest of the money over to, to manufacturers in China that I found. Wow. Wow. That's crazy, man. Just pure self-hustle and determination. I was going to ask you what the process is like you know, before we even like get into the backpack, but I'm sure it's kind of the same. I mean, yeah. you learn with your easy clip band, but still going from idea, initial idea or sketch to kind of developing and the whole process of talking with manufacturers and getting prices mm -hmm. and prototypes. What is that? What was that whole learning experience like? And how long did it actually take to uh, kind of produce the first easy clip band? Let's start with that. Well, the easy clip band, but let's actually talk about what it is first, because um, yeah, I know about it. You know, I seen, I followed it. But why do you break down what the Easy Clip Band is? Okay, great. So the Easy Clip Band is a rubber um, attachment around your wrist. So imagine a watch, and it has four different attachments. So as a barber, we use different clips in case you want to fade. So each clip has a different, it's like gradual, like a different size. So I found it awkward and I found it very difficult to constantly look for my clips or it's like comb guard, they call it, or having to reach out somewhere where I would have to um, kind of look for them. So along the way, I ended up evolving into a mobile barber, like an independent contractor. And I will see my clients either are their place of home or business. And I figured that was my way in because I wanted to be a niche. I wanted to be different. I didn't want to have the same thing that everybody else had out there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically a band that goes around your wrist that has four attachments. And each attachment has a little lever, which is like a little spring mechanism. And you attach each comb guard. So instead of reaching to your side, you could easily attach a comb guard to your wrist. And when you're ready to switch them out, you just take it from, from your wrist and put it into the machine. Mm -hmm. So that's in lame's word. That's what the easy clip band is. Yeah, man. That's pretty cool. I actually seen a promo video. I think you were doing in the DR with, yeah. uh, was that your cousin? And he was riding the motorcycle. Damn, bro. The your research, huh? Taking it on and <laughs> off, man. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I got to be prepared. I got to show respect. Thank you, man. I, yo, you, you take me down memory lane, man, bro, because we having this conversation and it's like um, you're helping me remember, you know, the process. Because like when you're really going all the way with something, sometimes it's easy to forget what's how you get there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So for all of you out there that's listening to this, it's always good to really take some time and really reflect on 
either your accomplishments or most importantly, your failures. So the fact that we have this conversation right now is, is helping me tremendously, bros. Thank you for that. Hey, Amen. I mean, that's you're giving me inspiration right now. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm just doing my job. I, I love watching interviews. So that's kind of how yeah. I got into it. I'm just interested mm -hmm. in stuff. So I just want to learn more yeah. and ask questions to especially hip hop artists, but entrepreneurs and people who are doing yeah. something they love, which clearly you're doing. You know, I could see it in social media. So it's great to yeah. catch up with you in this way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for sure. So sure. easy. Easy clip band and like how long? So how long did it take to get like the first one and start selling it? How long would you say from dream to like all right, we're we're up and running? All right, so dream to me actually having the the tangible product probably took like a year. Um, at first I was trying to figure it out because when you want to develop something like that, you gotta open up a mold. So it's like a, a big piece of uh, like a metal block or plastic or titanium, whatever it is that um, the application is going to go in. Mm -hmm. You have to buy this block and then they have to laser the machine in it like laser and cut get the parts right out of it. Yep. and get the mold and then they inject the plastic and the plastic comes out. So you got to be really careful about the measurements, because if you mess up, you can't you got to do the whole thing over again. Yeesh. Yeah. Right. So it, it took a while for me to figure it out. And this was before 3D printing. So that means that you really had to take a shot and really go out there and do it. But then along the way, 3D printing came out and it was still kind of new. Um, nowadays, you can just buy the machine and do it at home if you want. For cheap. Yeah, it's crazy. Actually, I remember in Delhi, we had a 3D printing machine and it, wow. was, you know, it was big. It was expensive. It yeah. was loud, it was hot, but a few years later, my friends got one in like his camper or some shit. So that's amazing, bro. You know, so it's crazy how quickly uh, the technology changed for that it has changed over time, you know. So it's like at the time when I was developing the product, everything wasn't really up to standards from what it is today. So it, it took a little bit longer for me. Um, it took more of a chance to have to take. Um, there was a lot of liability in play, but um. I never let that stop me. I always, you know, focus on getting the, the job done and always trying to remain a positive mindset on it. Um, so like about a year or so until I actually had the product and then I had to make the product. And then the funny story is that me going to YouTube and, and me doing some research, I said, you know what, I got to introduce this big. So when is the next like expo, either for barbers, hairstylists, and then I found this uh this expo online. It's a uh, CT Barber Expo in Connecticut, and that was probably like their fifth. Now they're a lot bigger, more more known. And um, I ended up taking some of the money that I had, just I had nothing left, man. Nah, I didn't I didn't have a job by that time. You know, I was just just trying to hustle. You know, just eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and you know you know how it is, man. Survival mode. Yeah, man. So I ended up um, taking a little bit of money I had, I bought a booth, and then, <laughs> you know, sometimes in life you got to be patient, man. You can't rush the, you can't rush the process, man. You can't sweat the techniques. You know what I mean? Talk about it. So then I ended up buying, uh, buying the booth, and then my products weren't going to be finished. Production wasn't going to be done by the time that the expo was gonna was gonna go live. And uh, I ended up rushing it and I got a whole bunch of like easy clip bands. A lot of them were, were faulty, my <laughs> doctor, they were all messed up, broken. And I had a few left, you know, so I took the, the good ones that I had. I put some crazy glue and I took it over to the um, to the CT Bar Expo. I sold a few and um, I gained a lot of experience through that. My whole family was here. So it was it was pretty cool. That's cool, man. Yeah, I'm sure you did a lot of networking there and, you know, was that yeah. like your first time? Mm -hmm. I, I don't really know about the barber community. So maybe like, you know, the local people and, you know, you guys talk or whatever. But what was it like being at, at a barber expo and, you know, getting seeing different people probably doing different things, all different products? What was that like? It was uh, it was like it was like stepping in, into the eye, to be honest, man. It was like everything was brand new. Um, I was in a whole different world. Um, I was coming in as a visitor, you know, rather than a host, even though I had my own my own booth. Um, I was able to network with a lot of people. 
Uh, but most importantly, I was able to see the business side of it. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So after the Easy Clip band, how how long after that did you start to develop the backpack or mobile workstation? I guess that it just speaks to wanting to be more efficient with your clients mm -hmm. and showing up to places. So talk about that idea and, you know, developing that. Mm -hmm. So I remember with the uh, with the bag. So I wrote a list down and the list it was an easy clip in. I told myself I was going to do an easy clip in a backpack, a cape, um, lighting, everything that was free, that was really necessary for a proper house call, like a home service. Um, I was going to create something but make it different. Right. So after the East Clip Band, I came out with another product called a Kittle Cape, which is like a cape with a with a see-through uh, mesh for kids whenever you know they get hair because they could either read a book or you know look at their their phone or tablet, you know, mm -hmm. to keep them entertained. I did that one too. Um, and then I took a little bit of profit that I got from those. So I, I ordered like a hundred. And then my strategy was to go to different barber shops around my neighborhood. And I just just went in, in the middle of the summer. I just had my backpack full of eat, um, um, kettle capes and easy clip bands. And I will introduce myself and, and sell my stuff. You know, at first I was very nervous. Um, everybody's going to be nervous. Um, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to expect. But I told myself that the more that I do this, the better I would get at it. And I kind of had a, a long-term you know, vision. And I told myself, I got to practice and I got to get better. So when, you know, the day comes, I'd rather be prepared than sorry. And so after the uh, Kettle Cape, um, I ended up just out of my own creativity, creating other products. And then the bag came about. So the bag came about because I was servicing my, my clients that I had. Um, let's rewind that. Because after that high, I ended up going to the barbershop. And I was working there and I ended up homing my skills and getting better at it. Mm -hmm. And then when the barbershop closed, um, I kind of got thrown out in the world again. So I had a few clients that I would cut their hair and I would see them at their place of home or business. And over time, I would um, I would I would walk around with like cases. Um, I had a guitar case because I always like to be different. I had a guitar case that I ended up putting the mirror on it and it was big, bro. It was like a huge case. And I thought it was cool because I didn't know any better, you know. So I thought I looked like a like a mariachi or something. People was looking at me like, wow, look at this guy. He plays guitar or something, and then train and buses and stuff. But I did it because there was nothing else like it out there. And I want to be different. Mm -hmm. So then I say, you know what? I did that and I'm getting a aluminum case that had the two trays that extend out. So then I had that case and I bought it for like $200. And I was upset because I told him, why does this cost so much? It should be affordable. It shouldn't be that much money. So then I used to carry my case and then I carried a backpack with my blow dryer and other heavier you know, equipment. And then I used to, being from New York, you know, we got to take trains and 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 um and buses and public transportation everywhere that I started getting clumsy and uncomfortable to carry all my equipment. Mm -hmm. So then I told myself, you know, what if I had a backpack and a case kind of like like a hybrid together? How would that look? Let's try doing that. Then I went on Google again and I went on eBay and Amazon and I started doing my research and I, I didn't see anything like it. So I said maybe there's a void over here that I could fill. Maybe there's something out of my own necessity that I'm sure other people out there will also benefit from. Um, so then I got, I got designing just a bag and, and a tray. And then I went to like 10, 20 different samples. Um, I didn't know what a pattern was at one point. I thought a pattern was like a design. It's actually like, you know what a pattern is, right? Uh, what, I, not really. What are you talking about? In what sense? So, a, a pattern is basically uh, it's what the people who sew things together use as a template. 
so it's, it's a paper and then they use that to trace it over and, and cut the size of the garment or whatnot. Mm, okay. So then I learned what that was. I went to, to the garment district here in downtown and I met this guy called Alan and he made my first bag and it was like a lot of money, like $3,000 that just, just to do that alone. Wow. I took that and, and I ended up just kind of using it and see what, what could be improved on it. Then I, I kind of broke down the case that I had and then put the extendable trays that were in that case and I put it in that bag and I kind of started working with it ever since. I was back in 2006, 2007. And then um, I ended up sending my 2006 sample. 2006 or 2016? Uh, I'm sorry, 2016, 2016, 2017. <laughs> got you, got you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I lost 10 years of my life during that time, man. So, Damn, so man. Much work. What happened? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> So then I ended up um, sending over my sample to uh, to China on uh, TMAC, and uh, I took I took a chance. I took a gamble, and I was scared to be honest because I, I didn't know what to expect. I thought they were, I thought steal my design. I thought they were going to um, disregard it. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I found this manufacturer, and she took my sample and then created her own sample, and she sent it back to me, and that's when the first model of the pro bag ever came out. Um, I took that and I kept working on it in 2017. Um, I seen those potential and I need a lot of money. Um, so then I went to, I got my Uber's license, my, my TLC driver license. And I told myself, you know, I need a car to see my clients. I don't want to keep taking trains everywhere. And I also could use the money on the side. So I used to work, man. I used to work. 4 a.m. to like 7 p.m. at night, mm. just all the time, constantly just Ubering around the city, meeting people. Uh, I saved up just every penny that I had and and I just put into it, man. I just, I went all in. And it definitely seems to be paying off, man. I mean, I see all the different styles and colors yeah. and uh, the barbers yeah. making their own videos with it. What has yeah. their reaction been? Uh, I'm sure it was great when it first dropped, you know, first getting it yeah. out there once once people realized what it was. But I'm sure over the past year, it's it's probably grown exponentially. And a lot more people have been a lot more barbers and grooming professionals have had to, you know, go mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, it was uh, it wasn't as successful, obviously, as it is now. Uh, I only had 100. And at that time, I was living with a roommate in the Bronx. And uh, I remember receiving just boxes and boxes and boxes of products, which is like 100. And um, <laughs> to save money, I ended up telling them in China, hey, don't assemble it. Keep it flat so I could save some money on shipping. And I'll assemble it over here. I did that. And that was like the worst thing I could have ever done. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of assembly required, my friend, right? Yeah, a lot of assembly, and then it's just it, it's better off for them to do it there, and then you receive it, you know, just how it's supposed to be here. Um, but I remember I sold a few. I opened up my first Shopify account, um, and I sold out out of, out of the 100 within, like, a couple months. Um, there were a few of them that were no good, and um, I kind of, like, took the loss on that. But then I did that not necessarily to make profit but to test the market and to see if, you know, I had something good going on over here, see what other people thought about it. Um, to this day, I still got people with the first original bag and tell me, yo, I still got the bag, man. I still wow, love that's it. Great. Wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, bro. It's a good feeling. That's really cool, man. I mean, I don't know anybody that's like developed a product. So it's really interesting to get your perspective on that. And yeah. hey, you talk about the whole process and it's not just I design it. They ship it over from China. It's good. Like, you know, you had to take a loss. You had to assemble it yourself. You had to, you know, go through all these different difficulties and trials and tribulations through it. But man, just the perseverance, you know, you, you'll be able to survive and, and come out better and stronger. Absolutely, T Mac. I, I remember I told myself, because I used to work so much just driving around the city, that I used to tell myself, you know what, this is only temporary. This is only temporary. It's gonna change, it's gonna change, it's gonna change. And I was going crazy at one point, you know, because I had no money. And being an overdrive in New York City, there's a lot of expenses involved. Cash, car, insurance. So 
I was kind of just hustling so hard and I was tired and I was getting, you know, kind of overwhelmed. But I always kept that in the back of my head, T Mac. I always told myself, you know what? This is only temporary and then it's not gonna last forever. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's that's that mindset that people should have moving forward and know that you are going to get trips and bumps further down the road, but just know that, you know, the road is not going to stop immediately when you feel like you're going to have a challenge. It's going to keep going and go on, go on, go on. Eventually you want to travel around the world. You know what I mean? You want to take your idea around the world. Around the globe. Yeah, man. That's, that's great. That's great to hear. I mean, it must be gratifying. I see on social media last week, you know, you posted a picture with the, truck full of backpacks it looks like you got a new office recently man yes, upgraded sir. to a nice office yes sir man so i ended up the first time i ever received my inventory of the new bags um it's crazy man because it, it, i started in 2016 things didn't really pop off until 2020 march until march 14 2020 and that was like a month after the pandemic started. Mm. So when the pandemic happened, that's when I was due to receive my inventory. So it's kind of like another sign from, from God telling me, hey, you got to keep going because this pandemic happened once in 100 years. And it just so happens that I'm dropping this product that benefits a lot of barbers and hairstylists, and tattoo artists, and anybody in the service industry with a means to really be proactive and and earn a living while their store were, were closed through the pandemic. So I dropped the product in March, you know, coincidentally when the pandemic happened. And uh, you know, everybody started seeing it and then it just took off from there, man. It's just it's just been a rocket ever since. So great response from response people. From people, people are loving people. it. What's like the best feature that people love about the backpack or that they mention? Uh, it's just the size, um, uh, how comfortable it is, um, the fact that you have so many different compartments, um, the fact that that backpack is waterproof and it's tearproof, it's ripproof, um, the fact that it has uh, different levels. The bottom level has uh, extendable trays that come out, which is like your workstation to store so much. Um, every detail about the bag was really was very was thought of throughout right because i want to get this the, the exact size i want to make sure that everybody i want to make this bag as perfect as possible so people won't necessarily feel like they're missing out on something that they need and aside from that i always want, i also wanted to make the backpack customizable right so i didn't want to go into it like an ibm I wanted to go into like a Mac, you know what I mean? Brand new and fresh. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, I mean, backpack, that's awesome, man. I, it, I almost want to get it for uh, my DJ stuff because it you looks should. like there's enough space. I got to disassemble one. it. But uh, no, I actually seen DJ Clark Kent, who uh, worked with Biggie and like Jay Z. He and he just teamed up with the. Uh, company to me i guess i don't know i think mm-hmm. they make clothes or i don't know if they make bags but they actually came up with the dj backpack i just seen this like two days ago but it's like 750 dollars. so i think me and you gotta get together and you know we'll yeah, come we up with do something. for the people <laughs> man for the people yeah yeah we got to man hey man listen this 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 item here this product the pro bag could easily be be translated into so many different industries you know that's the beautiful part of it very um, but it's also affordable, right? It's, it's not on seven hundred dollar piece of equipment. Yeah, it's like seven fifty, pushing eight once you get to the shipping and the taxes and all that. I'm like, I'll just use what I have for right now, and you know, <laughs> if, it, if it rains, I'll put on another jacket over it or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's cool, man. The waterproof, all the features. That's uh, I'm sure that's really great for all the mobile people who yes, are sir. who are using it. Um, so are you still doing cuts? I mean, this is a owner operator, you know, he's, he's working, he's doing everything. Are you mostly developing products? Kind of what, what are you mostly focused on nowadays? I got to maintain the vehicle, man. You know, I got to give it oil changes here and there. I got to make sure, you know, everything is, is up to par. I got to make sure I stay on top of my game. Um, I don't have a clientele 
on a regular basis anymore because just my time is limited. Um, but I have learned to really uh, learn how not to really um, overexert myself. Um, so now I do have a couple clients that I see here and there um, just to keep practicing on my skills. And, you know, because I love it, I use it as content as well. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for me to really, you know, just be, be on call. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about that balance. I heard you mention the marketing earlier. So I assume you're doing all the marketing online and stuff like that. It's it's yeah. serious stuff. I mean, that's a whole job in itself is just marketing. There's a whole job in just developing it. You know, somebody's mm -hmm. just doing haircuts. So like, talk about that balancing act and, and putting on the different hats to play these different roles. It's hard, man. I just tell myself, you know, you, you got to artwork yourself because there's somebody else out there is going to work harder than you. So I always told myself that, and I always try to learn every single aspect of my business before I hand it up to somebody else. So you need to, you need to know how to run your company from, from dirt to, to sky and not have to rely on other people to do your job for you without you knowing what they're doing. You know what I mean? So um, probably like a year since, since we've been a successful company. And when I say we, I always speak about myself and GMB Pro as a brand. Um, put email, um, uh, customer service, uh, manufacturing, sourcing, accounting. Maintaining the website. Maintaining the website, marketing, uh, accounting again, bro. It's like one of the big ones, taxes. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It really is. Um, but I learned how to manage my time throughout the day you know so if you have 24 hours a day you sleep for eight hours what's that you got what 16 hours left out of 16 hours you you know you probably have another three hours to eat socialize or something that's 13 hours now you have 13 hours in a day to really you know plan out your day accordingly and be on top of your shit bro because if not then it's just you're gonna get overwhelmed easily for real. Yeah. It's, you know, you can get pulled in many different directions, but it's just about having that focus and, and just maintaining and pushing forward down that path. Right. Yeah, man. It's, it's also important to know that you don't know the edge until you're stressed out. You know what I mean? Like it has to take for you to really be stressed out to your, to your maximum capacity to really understand where the edge is going to be. Mm. So I think that's another important, important uh, um, fact and how to really grow and, and, and have self-development as well. Yeah. You got to push yourself and find, find that limit almost. Right. For sure. You have to, because how else are you going to know? Interesting. Interesting. So you're not doing as many cuts uh, nowadays, but do you have like a favorite style that you like doing or favorite like particular kind of thing? Somebody walks in, sits in your chair or you know what this guy wants. You're like, yes, I like doing this one. You have a particular favorite thing you like to do. Yeah, man. My old time favorite thing is cutting my little nephew, man. five years old. You know, I love cutting his hair because it's the time that we take to really talk and be personal. You know what I mean? And, and help cultivate some of my ideologies on him. So that's probably my one and only favorite client that I have right now. Wow, Who never pays awesome. me. <laughs> man, I'd pay you. You know what I'm saying? We just, I wish we lived a little bit closer. You know, I'd be in that rotation. Yeah. Yeah, I wish so too, man. You in Long Island right now? No, I'm actually up in Cape Cod. You know, we're we're living up in Cape Cod, doing our thing up here. But I'll be down next weekend for a wedding, so I don't know. Maybe if you're free on the weekend or something, we can meet in the city. I don't know. Yeah, man, for sure. Hit me up, bro. All right, all right. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, yeah anytime. Hey, whenever you need a vacation, a little break, you come up here to Cape Cod. You relax. I got you. We got the restaurant. You know, you uh, fed well up here. Yeah, man. I, I would love to go. I never been. I heard so much about Cape Cod. Um, is it, is that by Martha's Vineyard? Yeah. Martha's Vineyard is actually like an Island off of it. So, okay. you know, Cape Cod is just kind of the hook off of Massachusetts mm -hmm. and Martha's Vineyard is like an Island that you could get to. Yeah. You can't drive there. <laughs> you actually got to take a <laughs> boat over there. <laughs> no doubt. All right. That sounds good, man. Definitely yeah, man, we got, we got the New York pizza up here. We had to bring up the good flavor because they're missing it up here. They're, they're throwing cheddar cheese on the pizzas and no way, dude. I don't know. I don't oh know. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about food in, in in a little bit to wrap up the interview. 
But okay. um, do you have any like favorite barbers that you watch online? I mean, I'm sure the game has changed a lot from, you know, 2009 to now with social media and people doing videos and probably all different styles and stuff like that. Do, I, I enjoy watching barber videos. It's just cool seeing, you know, the it's really art. It's, it's cool mm -hmm. seeing the art take place. I enjoy watching people make pizza and DJs do their thing. Do you have any favorite like barbers that you follow? Yeah, we follow dropping names. Um, I know that I follow a few barbers right now. Um, they have the craziest styles and haircuts and creativities, like to the max things I've never seen, I even thought it was possible. Yeah. Right. But I tend to follow those barbers who lean more into like inspirational, um, motivational aspects, as well as, um, barbers who have their own business. So their own product line. Mm. Um, because I can't, I get kind of piggyback, you know, back and forth and, and see how they move. Um, I will say though, that there's a brand out there called Toon 45 and, uh, it's led by a young entrepreneur about my age and he's a barber as well. Similar story. And, uh, I get to see his progression and kind of use that as not only inspiration, but as a standard to where I need to be at myself. Interesting. That's cool. That's very cool. What, what was the name of that again? Uh, the name of the brand is called Tomb 45. Tomb 45. All right. All right. We'll have to yeah. check that out, man. I, I love inspiration. You know, I follow people reading books. And while we're on this subject is what do you kind of do when you're not worried about the business? How do you get your mind off of it? Do you, you know, we just talked about, you know, some inspiration. Do you like to listen to podcasts, read any books? Kind of what, what do you do to keep the inspiration flowing? I do, man. I have my routine uh, every morning or in the morning, probably around five, six. I wake up and I go for a walk and that's my time. You know, it's time for me to really get ready for the day and kind of like plan out what I need to do. And I usually just walk for like an hour or so around my neighborhood and a couple miles. And I like listening to podcasts uh, or music. Um, I like listening to this podcast called... Um, uh, so many. There's one in particular with Guy Raz. Mm. It's about entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship. It's called um, How I Built This. And it highlights a whole bunch of different CEOs and founders. And it, same thing we're talking about now. And I listen to their stories and things like that. It's just what I usually like listening to the most. Interesting. So you brought up music. What, what's the music that you're listening to nowadays? What, what do you like to get you going? A lot, man. I have a, a very unique and very diverse palette <laughs> when it comes to sound. Um, I like uh, I like this band called um, Duran Jones and the Indications. Have you heard of them before? Uh, it's Duran Jones. It sounds a little familiar. Yeah. I can't think of it off top, though. Bro, they, they got to have one of the best albums next to literally bro and it's kind of like effed up putting them together and in the same like comparing them but i think their album is probably comparable to like marvin gaye's album you know wow back in 71 it's really really you know american soul classic kind of stuff um i like my hip-hop of course um i like uh uh i like joy badass back mm. in, his last album was fire uh, corday Oh, I'd be in Corday. Yeah, that's a young one. That's of the same ilk. Yeah, yeah. Corday's nice too. It reminds me of J. Cole a lot. J. Cole's album's fire. Mm -hmm. one too. Yeah, I like that. I like zoning out and listening to it. You know what I mean? Like listening to his words and the story. Um, I also like Asa Ferg. Of course, he represent Harlem. Harlem, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like, and then, you put know, I have work. my, I, huh? You'd be listening to Put in Work at five in the morning. <laughs> yeah. put them in the dirt yeah exactly man get you hype right <laughs> yeah for sure for sure yeah man and amongst that uh i usually have my um uh, i like listening to to the new artists coming out too like um money bag yo is pretty dope i, I like this album I, I got to listen to more newer artists. I'm so stuck on like the classic stuff and just digging into the older music, like getting to know my history on Marvin Gaye and things like that, that I'm kind of missing some of these newer people. So me and you, we got to talk a little bit more. I got to get tapped in with what DC's on a little bit. 
yeah, man, it's just, I'm not going to tell you it's like the best stuff out there, but it's, it's like things that I like. You no, know it's I mean? interesting and, and different, man. I'm definitely going to check out Duran Jones. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, this is a good album, bro. Definitely do you work. have, do you have like a favorite three albums? You know, famous question, like if you're stuck on an island, you got three albums to bring with you. What are they? What are they going to be? Marvin Gaye. All right. What's going on? You have uh, Duran Jones and Indi Indication, American Love Call. And I think the last would have to be Kanye West. Um, what is it? Uh, the fan Dark Twisted Fantasies. Ooh, yes. That's like a movie. Classic. Yeah, man. This is a classic, bro. Love every single track up in there. Word. Good. Well-rounded uh, choices there. Very well-rounded choices. So... I now have a Dominican girlfriend, so I'm getting no in, more in go. tune with the culture. My brother. <laughs> I like my Dominicans, I guess. I don't know. Yes, sir. But, yes, you know, sir. I'm getting more in touch with the culture, more in tune. So I'm getting on the Dominican artists and music wave. I actually played for the first time last week at a bar, uh, the underground bar up here. That's I, I, I was doing it before COVID, but, you know, a year and a half, haven't been able to do it, but they finally opened back up. So I brought out some of them Dominican songs and they was going <laughs> crazy. So who are some Dominican artists that I need? I got Bullen 47. I got a little Kimbala. Who else? <laughs> Kimbala. <laughs> Yo, you should listen to um, El Alfa. It's pretty good. I just seen that on your story. I wrote that down. Okay, good. All right, he's good. I, I like Aventura. I like the classic Aventura. Aventura, yeah, man. I, yeah, I love bachata. I, I got the bachata stuff too. We 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 in there. We in there. I'm getting ready, but we plan on going to the DR at the end of the year for like New Year's and stuff. You know, she has a bunch of family down there. That's where her father is from. Um, so what do I need to experience while I'm down there? Give me a couple things that I need to do while I'm down there just to understand the culture and you know what what. What don't we have here that I got to do there? Well, you should listen to my brother's music. All right. His name is Ramo Roma. He, he does uh, um, reggaeton and stuff like that. He also mm -hmm. does okay. bachata. He's pretty good. He's in DR. He's the only thing. Ramo Roma. You're going to have to spell you... that out for me after, but uh, we okay. got it. I'll tell you right now so everybody else could know as well. It. It's R-A-M-O-R-O-M-A. -O -O Ramo Roma. Ramo Roma. Got it. You got it, yeah. <laughs> when when you in DR though, T Mac, uh, bro, one thing I would recommend for you to do, and anybody else listening, is is to invest, invest in property, invest in some type of land over there. Um, it's obviously more affordable than here. Taxes are way more affordable too. Plus, you have a little getaway that you go back to Airbnb it out if you're not using it. Mm. But when you go to DR, you could definitely go to, to the beach, get a, a fried fish with tostones, mm, chill on okay. the beach with a little corona. Yeah. You go over to the to the mountains, you go over to the like it's like a whole my my uncle has a farm with a whole bunch of guineo and batata and yuca and, and potatoes, Ooh. just a whole bunch of like you know, things like that on the farm. Um you could also go to the capital. If you want to go and experience some history, uh, which is one of the oldest cities in, in the Caribbean, Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo, yep. You go to Santo Domingo, and, or you could just go to my hometown, Haina. It's a little village, man, and I'll show you a good time over there. <laughs> For sure, man. Hey, we're going to go We're gonna go all around. We're going to try to spend a few weeks down there and, you know, get in touch. I'm, I'm trying to get some dance lessons on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? I got to <laughs> be able to move a little bit, not embarrass myself too much. You can't be the, the, the gringo over there that can't dance, bro. You got to go over there and you got to outshine, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell my girl this. I got to practice. <laughs> yeah. You could, um, do you, do you like dancing bachata, merengue, salsa? All of it. I just need to learn it, you know? <laughs> mm, yeah, salsa is probably the more complex one. Um, merengue is the easy one, two steps. But I think bachata is the easiest because okay. it's the slowest. I got the four steps, the first four, you know, <laughs> that's all you need. And then everything else after that is just creative. All right. All right. Nice. Nice. So we're going to we're going to work on the dance moves before we go down there. Um, but how I've kind of been ending all these interviews, you know, this is flavor in your ear radio. We bring the flavor in music. But, you know, I'm a pizza man, too. We spin. <laughs> <but we make laughs> I like <pizza>. that. <laughs> so give me a uh, 
a Latino food spot or maybe Dominican spot in particular in New York, in your neighborhood, that that's like your go to spot. And give me a pizza spot, too, if you have one. El Malecon. All right. They have three locations. They have one in New Jersey, but I got kind of bit off for them. So they got sold and they closed it down in oh, Fort shit. Lee. There's one in 181st. All right. I'm sorry, 179 on 231st, where I grew up at in the Bronx. Uh, and they have another two in Manhattan. And uh, they have the best coffee in the world. Do not take mm. a sip right away because it's extremely hot. Okay, but make sure you get it light and sweet, bro. Oh, my God. They got the best coffee. And that's just the coffee. So imagine the food. Yeah, we didn't even get to the food yet. The food is out of this world. And it's you get half a chicken. That's their thing. Their thing mm. is chicken. When you go by the window, you see rotisserie chicken just rotating. And it draws you in because of the smell, bro. Mm. It tells you, come in here. You go in there. You get yourself a half a chicken, right? You put a little bit of lime on it if you want to so get a little bit of citrus, you know, Caribbean kind of taste to it. But I would recommend you get the chicken. Tell them, give me the chicken from the back because that's one that's the crispiest, right? Ooh. You get that one because that's one with the skin that you can take off. And either put the skin as a, as a dessert to treat yourself afterwards when the meal is done. Or, you know, you could just eat it the classical way and just eat it with the chicken breast and stuff like that itself. But make sure you get the chicken. You get the chicken, you get the, the rice. You can either get umoro, which if you don't know, umoro is you can either get umoro with habituela, which is beans. Mm. Or you get it with guandules, which is like peas, some shit. Put that together. And then they give you like little bananas on the side. You got to order tostones too if you want to. If you really, if you really, really want something good during the winter time, what you do is that you get a sancocho. Okay. So you go in there, you tell them, give me a large sancocho. But you got to look at them though. because Sometimes they don't put enough meat in there. So you got to make sure. Oh, okay. You got to watch them. You got to watch them, bro, because sometimes they only put like either chicken or whatnot, but it comes with ham. It comes with uh, chicken. I don't like the chicken on it, though, because then the skin is not crispy. I like my skin crispy. Mm. Or you get it with um, with like oxtail and other stuff like that, too. And it comes with like uh, um, platanos and, and yuca and potatoes and all that good stuff. You take sancocho, get a large sancocho, because we both, you know, we men, so we need to eat, bro. You get a large sancocho and you get the tostones. You dip the, the tostone in the sancocho. You dip it in like an Oreo cookie and, and milk, bro. You take Man. a bite and you do it again because the tostone is like this big, bro. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. It's going to warm you up. You got all your nutrition that you, that, that you need throughout the day. And it's the best restaurant in the world, El Malecon. Now, if you want to get the best pizza in New York, there's only one place for that, man. It's called Sam's Pizza. On 231st and Broadway in Bronx, New York. That's all they do. They do the Sicilian and they do the slice. Nothing else. No tomato, simple. no simple, no, no meatballs, no Parmesan, whatever. It's straight pizza. And this is what he, he closes in the weekend. This guy has some nerve, bro. Wow. He closes in the weekend because he knows it's so good. It only opens Monday to Friday. That's ballsy. That's great. That's all you need. That's all you need, man. Sam's Pizza. Sam's Pizza. We got that noted, man. I'm going to go back. I'm going to write all this down. I hope you guys are taking notes out there. We're getting gems. Gems <laughs> in business. Gems in food. It sounds like you could survive hibernation just by eating a couple of those meals. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeez, man. I'm hungry. I got to go eat after this. You cook yourself? T-Mac? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I, I do my thing. I, I like to grill different Me styles too. of chicken and stuff like yeah. that but my girl she's she's she'll cook uh 10 pounds of rice and yeah that's know, all we do <laughs> I, I'll, I'll do whatever else with it but uh you know she yeah. usually cooks enough for the week and, and i'm good yeah yeah that's that's what we do we, we tend to overcook man i don't have a problem with it it's, it's not me neither <laughs> I don't, i'm not gonna complain thank you christiana <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great man all right dc thank you so much for uh taking the time to have this conversation. Uh, I really appreciate it. Definitely drew a lot of inspiration myself from it. It was great to talk to you, catch up, get some insights into your business, your story, your growth, your development. Um, what's next, man? What can we expect next? Or what are you working on? What do you want? To, what do you want to let the people know? The world is next, man. I'm trying to conquer the world like thinking the brain, bro. 
You know, I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to create a legacy again, not only for my nephew who's watching all this himself and still too young to understand, but I also want to create a legacy for everybody else out there that thinks that things is not possible. Things that things are not being afforded to them, or they may think that, you know, it's easier to give up than it is for them to really pursue something that they truly believe in. So me personally, I want to expand my product line to include other items. Um, I have this big launch coming up in July, uh, which is going to include four or five different just new products I'm coming out with. Wow, nice. Uh, yeah, hopefully you get to come through. If I end up doing something in the city and everything goes well, then I probably rent out a place in the city so we could have a big launch over there. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's just... My goal is to just, just buy my mama house, bro. That's that's exactly what I want to do. Man, yeah, man. That, that's cool. Any anytime I hear that from somebody, like I, I appreciate that and respect that because I'm working, you know, with my parents right now, and that's what I feel like I owe them. So that's kind of yeah. what I'm doing right now. So Absolutely. I mean, I respect that. I, I love that. Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. So that's 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 my biggest motivation right there. That's what really gets me, you know, just keeps me focused. And in line. Amen, man. Great stuff. Great way to close it. DC, once again, my man, thank you so much for doing this. And hopefully we'll we'll get together soon and we can chop it up in person. Absolutely, man. T Mac, thank you for having me. Uh, this is a great show. You're a great host. And you have the perfect voice, bro. You know your voice really echoes, man. You have a great voice, bro. You sent that you said that last week. And I every now and then that. somebody will will compliment me on my voice. And I'm like, I never really think about it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's about, I guess I just developed it to a point through, you know, trying to rap initially and then just okay. being on the radio, just, you know, getting the, getting into the mic and making sure people hear you and understand you clearly. But I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Hey, listen, bro. Thank you for having me over and it was good connecting with you. Absolutely, brother. We'll talk soon. And, uh, I look forward to our meeting when we create the, uh, the GNB DJ backpack. Yeah, you know what I'm about to say, right? <laughs> Small Sprite. Yeah, you thirsty, son? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Shout out Kevin Hughes. Man. Yes, sir. <laughs> that was fun times, fun times. All right, brother, take care. We'll talk soon, all right? All right, take care, man. Thanks for having me again. Later. Thank you so much. Peace, man.